One problem we have with this game is that with the walls the way they are, there's no way to actually lose in this game. So I'm going to remove my bottom wall and I'm going to replace it with another object. So I'm going to insert a new sprite. I'm going to make that the lose wall. Close my image editor, name this lose wall. Stretch this out so that it fills up the bottom part of my screen. And now I need to do something whenever my ball hits that wall. So I'm going to add an event whenever the ball has a collision with another object, and that other object is the lose wall object. The first thing I want to do is I want to lose a life, but I don't have any lives yet. So I'm going to add a new global variable. I'm going to name my variable lives. And let's say we start with five of them. All right, so I go to system. Now I'm going to subtract instead of add to my variable. I'm going to subtract, conveniently enough, one from lives. So click done. Now I need to update my lives on my screen, which I don't even have a spot for yet. So I'm going to go back to my layout and I'm going to add another text object. Click somewhere around here. Let's change that to size 20. So I'm going to need to resize my box again, change my color to white, and change my text to lives colon. And you might say, well, you didn't put in a number. And that's because this time I'm going to draw my lives with an image instead of just putting a number. Now the image that would be most likely to represent our lives is probably the paddle. But you could also use the ball. Either one works. So I'm going to create another object. This time I want to do a tiled background. So click somewhere. I'm going to load my paddle. But I'm going to resize it so it's not quite as large. And I'm going to do half size, so 52 by 12. Hit OK. And that looks fine there. Now when I close this image editor, you're going to see that I get a whole bunch of copies of this. I'm going to expand the size and I'm going to change the height to the 12 because I made it a 52 by 12 image. And we'll see I get a single row of these. And the number of these I get is really determined by how wide I make this. So if I made it 52 pixels wide, I would get exactly one because it was a 52 by 12 image. Double that's 104. 52 times 2 is 104. So if I get the number of lives and I multiply that by 52, that's how many pictures are drawn. So I'm going to move this over here. You'll notice that by the way it snaps, it doesn't really go where I want it to. I can either hold the Alt key to drag it to where I want it, or after I've snapped it somewhere close, I can use the arrow keys to nudge it one pixel at a time to just where I want it to be. I'm going to name this object Draw Lives. Now the size here doesn't really matter, so I'll even just make it really long so we have a bunch of them. And then in my event sheet, I'm going to draw my lives. So there's actually another event I want to add now, and that is the start of layout event. So I'm going to click add event, system, like to start, we have on start of layout. So at the very beginning of my layout, I'm going to even have this first. I'm going to do a couple things. Well. I want my score label to draw the score. That's a good idea. That's also important so that if your text here doesn't match the format here, then when your game starts, it will be this format the entire time so that you don't have a jump from one text style to another. Next thing I'm going to want to do is draw how many lives I have. So I'm going to do that by taking my draw lives object, and then I'm going to set the width. And the width is going to be 52, because that's how many pixels wide I made it, times my variable lives. And that's it. Now every time I update my lives, I'm also going to want to modify that. So if I run this now, we'll see that it's great. It starts with 5, but when I hit my lose wall, nothing actually happens. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it down here. When I run that, now when I hit my lose wall, I lose one life but the ball never comes back. That's not great. It'd be really convenient if after the ball went out of bounds, it would just go back to wherever the paddle was. So I'm going to tell it to do that. So I'm going to add an action to the ball, and I'm going to tell it to go to a position. That is called set position. And the x coordinate is going to be whatever my paddle's at. So I'm going to find my paddle, dot x. So that's the paddle's x coordinate. And then the y is going to be the paddle's y coordinate. Now that's not exactly where I want it to be, because then it'll be right in the middle of the paddle. So I'm actually going to want it to be higher, so I'm going to subtract something. 
like maybe the ball's height. Since my paddle and my ball are about the same height, that works fine. If they were not the same, I'd want to do the paddle's height divided by 2 plus the ball's height divided by 2, all in parentheses, and that's the actual amount I want to subtract. But for this, this works just fine. Then I'm also going to want to tell the ball to change the direction it's going, so I'm going to set the angle of motion, so it's bullet mint, and I'm going to change that to 270, which is going to be straight up. So now if I run that, when it goes out of bounds, it's going to go back to the paddle and go straight up. One other thing I'm going to want to do is I'm also going to want the game to be paused. So I'm going to add a system object to the time scale. So I'm going to set my time scale to 1.0 is normal. So I'm going to do 1.0 minus the current time scale. So since the current time scale is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 is going to be paused. The next time I do 1 minus time scale, it's going to be 0, so 1 minus 0 is 1, so it's going to go back to normal speed. So if you do 1 minus time scale, it just flips back and forth between paused and normal speed. I'm going to copy that and actually place that up in my start of layout, except I just want the game to start at 1.0 speed. So now when I run it, my ball jumps back to my paddle, and the game is paused. But I don't have any way of unpausing it. So let's go fix that real quick. I like to unpause it by using a keyboard event, but when I do add event, I don't have keyboard anywhere, so I need to go back to my layout and insert another object. This time it's the input category keyboard object. That's not going to show up anywhere on your screen, but in your projects bar. It will now show up on the list under your object type. So when I go back to my event sheet, I can now add a keyboard on key pressed event. And I'm going to use the pause key. If you are not familiar with the pause key, it is above page up and page down, straight above the arrow keys on your keyboard. And click done. And I'm also going to let this work with the letter P. So I'm going to right click on the screen arrow so that the whole thing is selected. If I click here, I'm just selecting this event, but if I click here, it selects the whole thing. So I'm going to right click on that leftmost section and I'm going to make this an OR block. That's going to allow me, when I add another condition, to go to keyboard and do the on key press event again as well, because you're not going to have two key press events happen at the same time. It will see them as two distinct events, even if they happen at the same millisecond. So here, the key that we want is going to be the P key. Click OK and done. So now I have keyboard on pause pressed or P pressed. I'm going to copy and paste my time scale to one minus time scale. Now when I run that, the ball jumps back. I can press P to unpause it. You might notice that this is acting a little unpredictable bouncing off of this panel here. It's actually overlapping it by a pixel or two here. So I'm going to go back to setting my position to paddle X, Y minus ball height and also do like minus two to go like two more pixels. So then whenever it goes back, it's a little bit clearer. So when I unpause it, it goes back to going straight up as I expect it to. If you don't want it to go straight up, you can always modify the angle. A lot of these games will go up and slightly to the right when they start. So if you wanted to do that, you could just change the angle to another number like 290, for example. So now when we run it and it dies, it will go up and slightly to the right.